Yo, it's Corey here, Floodway, and I have something I am stoked to get into the shop today. It is this big old stack of new eco frames. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I landed on the choice, how I made the decision, and stretch one for you just to show how kind of easy and simple it is. Now, I already know we're going to see way higher tensions here, so I am stoked to see what that does for our setups, our production, and our print quality. So let's dig in. I'm ready. Okay, print buddies, right off the bat, I gotta say this is not a sponsored post. We do not have any special deal with any sort of company. So when I break this down, you can rest assured that I based this decision on nothing else but our shop and the information I had and that's it. For our industry and other shops and you know the viewers of this channel, I really don't understand the value of a paid review or a trade for a review or for anything that resembles a review like a test. Now that doesn't mean I wouldn't take a sponsor like say for our improvement video series or something like that, but definitely not for a favorable review. So please remember that I make my living doing custom screen printing and I share these videos to encourage discussion and sharing ideas between shops. You should be able to trust that if I like something it's because of a business decision that ultimately benefits our clients in the end. Does that make sense? So let's dig into this stack of screens and how I got them. So first things first, what is an eco frame? To me, it kind of hits the sweet spot between a static glue up frame like the ones we're using now and Newman roller frames like we're not using. So here's just a random picture of it. The idea is you can get pre-made mesh panels with locking strips on the edges of them that you stretch onto these frames yourself with a simple tool so that's no glue, no solvents, and the frames are way easier to prepare for that next restretch. So it's kind of a win-win all around as far as stretching goes. The only downside is there's no control like with a roller frame. You can't keep tensioning them. So it really is similar to a static in that way. It's kind of set it and forget it. So these panels and roller frames and even these eco frames, sometimes called click frames and stuff like that, are not new. They've been around longer than I've been in the industry, which is like six or seven years only. But when I last looked into these, the mesh selection was not quite there yet, which might have been amplified by me being in Canada. And the other factor is I don't remember the upfront cost being that attractive when I looked into this a couple years ago. So here we are today. So let me break down my math here. I'm gonna use round numbers in Canadian dollars, so bear with me. Now, I tried a couple Canadian stretchers who all vary in their service and quality, like I'm sure any stretcher does, but I was getting static frames here for about $60 Canadian. If you're close to your stretcher, you can return your old static frames and have them restretched for a bit of a discount but I have a stretcher here who doesn't have the mesh we like and I'm able to sell the old frames to him, which is a good step in the right direction, but not a winner. And if you're far from a good stretcher, another option is freight services, like sending a whole skid of 100 frames. But I have a fellow Canadian shop who did that to a reputable stretcher, and while he was able to get a better stretch screen and he was able to save some money by sending them all in bulk, big amount of freight, it still worked out to about $60 Canadian per screen when all was said and done. And that was for a hundred at a time. It did sound like they came in in a higher tension than the Canadian stretchers I've used, but still $60 a frame and not exactly that much higher tension. We're talking like one or two Newtons above what I was seeing land in our shop here. But when we get statics, we order like 20 screens at a time. But what that means is our fleet needs to be big enough to have 20 screens missing from it before we make another order. And the inventory thing is huge, but let me get this upfront cost thing out of the way first. Okay, so about $60 for a static frame when all is said and done. Now let's take a look at this Ryonet package. So it is on sale right now. Again, not a sponsored post, but just a great time to get in on it. And they have 12 frames, 24 panels, and it worked out to about $1,100 Canadian, plus about $150 for me to get it over the border. So that all works out to $52 a screen. So it's actually cheaper for me to try these mesh panels out, plus all the other savings. And obviously, since you're replacing the panel, but not the frame, they're just gonna get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So the first set of 24 total is $52, but every panel you put into these frames is just gonna make them cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. No complaints there. Okay, so the inventory thing is a huge deal to me because if we order them 20 at a time, then we need to have a fleet with enough inventory in it to be able to stand having 20 screens missing from it before we make an order. If we're sending them in bulk on a skid, like 100 frames, then we need 100 frames. We need to be prepared to be missing all those frames as they go out to stretch and come back. That's a big batch. So with these panels, you can build yourself a nice little cart like I did 
and you can stretch a frame the same day that it breaks. So your fleet might only need to be able to handle missing one, two screens, and that's it. So you just remove the old mesh, clean the channels, and pop a new panel in. The panels are super easy to ship, they come in a little small box, and so the sustainability factor is huge too. There's no more screens traveling across the country, just these little boxes of panels. And your aluminum screen stays in your shop, doesn't go anywhere, and lets you keep a tighter inventory. Okay, so the next big savings is all in the print and the setup. So the average static screen like this one comes in at about 21 or 22 Newtons. This one settled to like 20 Newtons as you can see, and that's pretty good. I mean, we're not gonna kick it out quite yet, but these new eco frames are stretching to like 29, 30 Newtons on the first stretch. And tension is critical for ink transfer. It's just gonna give us brighter, smoother prints with less pressure. It's gonna sit on top of the shirt better instead of in the knit. It's gonna have a softer hand, a better feel. It's gonna print faster, easier. Tension is king. So we're hoping this will contribute to faster setups, faster run times, and definitely better quality off the press. So the upfront costs and the inventory savings have pretty clear benefit and return on investment. Quality is a little harder to measure, especially in this context. It's hard to say how much a better quality print is going to affect your bottom line, your profit, your revenue, anything like that. So even with quality being hard to measure like that, I still feel this is gonna have a positive impact on more than just the inventory and the cost per screen. Okay, so that is how I made the decision here. And while I'm super excited about the inventory savings and the cost savings per screen, I gotta say I'm most excited for printing with a higher tension without the fussing and maintenance of rollers. So I thought I would stretch one of these, you know, in real time, just kind of talk out loud while I'm doing it to show that it's easy and simple because I think that's a huge deal too. It's just easier to show someone how to do this. So I'm gonna get these uh, these channels into place. I'm gonna center them up. You see I've got a 160 thin thread mesh here and I'm just gonna get it settled into these channels. So first things first, you wanna make sure the mesh is facing the right way. That's super important. And when you put this in, it says to give it one little roll. And this is something I remember from stretching roller frames. I have some experience doing that from an old graphics job. And I remember that it was very important to set these channels properly. Because if you have any sort of, if you know, if the mesh is catching on any of these corners, if it's got any folds or anything, that's gonna create a big tight spot. Because this is where all the tension goes to. So you definitely wanna be careful of that. Now, right off the bat, I noticed I did this long side first. Brown ants suggest doing the long ends first. And I'm not sure how much that matters for um, inserting the strips, but it definitely matters when you're doing the stretch. It's just a little easier to stretch it if you start on the long ends and end with the long. You start on the short ends and finish on the long ends. So just a little flip here. And just gotta snug it in there. So it'll go. I'm in a little trouble here, but there it is. So just gotta get that in there. Nice and dialed. Make sure your your mesh isn't crooked or caught on anything. And yeah, get this one in there too. Okay, so before I get the tool out and get into this, I got to check. I gotta check it. That's something that you know, the roller frames take a while to stretch if you're work hardening them. You'll stretch them up, you'll let them sit, you'll stretch them tighter. And the worst thing ever is getting to that last little stretch and then popping the screen because of some issue in your channels or some nick in the thread or something like that. So it's really worth, you know, obviously you could do this faster, but it's really worth taking the time to just make sure that it's nice and straight before you grab the tool and start stretching. So this is the, uh, the stretcher tool. I don't really know if it's got a real name. And what we're gonna do, like I said, start on the long side. We're gonna put this on here. So you tilt it forward, it grabs the mesh, and then you can just stretch it into place. And I'm going slow because 
you don't want to like bounce the mesh or anything like that. You just want it to gently lock into place. And I'm still kind of checking, you know, making sure my corners are looking good and stuff like that. But overall, it's pretty simple. You know, you just kind of get it in here. Just kind of get it lined up, let it grab, and then pull the stretch. There we go. Ooh, you can tell it's already tight and nice. So this is the third last side. I got two more to go. So I'm gonna go real slow here. This is sketchy. There it is. Okay, so I got one more to go. I'm gonna flip it around. Normally I walk around the table, but obviously we got a camera here. So I'm gonna flip this around. I'm going to lock this last side in. So the same thing goes into the groove on the side of the screen, side of the frame, I should say. You get it locked into that channel and then pull it back. And that is toit. That is very tight. All right. So that's it. That's all. Can you tell that this is a super nice screen? So I'm going to get this tension meter on it. Let's have a look. What are we at? This one is at 34 Newtons. First one I stretch is at about 29. This one's at 34, which to me is quite impressive. Remember I said that we're looking at like 19, 20 Newtons sometimes when these things arrive. So having 40% higher tension, that is a pretty big deal if you ask me. So last thing here is the uh, tape. You're supposed to put some fancy tape on here. I ordered some, it's from Polycan, I think it's called. It's called like a cloth tape. And that's supposed to be the good stuff, but it's not coming in for a couple of days. So I've got this wicked black, it's called, uh, it's pretty much like gaffer's tape. Just a thick duct tape. And the idea here is not just to protect the mesh on this hard edge because the mesh is exposed there with no glue or anything protecting it. But another big factor here is to keep reclaimed juice, to keep reclaimed stuff out of these channels. And that's something I learned with the roller frames that if you don't clean those channels properly, if they're not rinsed out, if you let say like some haze remover sit in there, you're going to have problems. That is going to prematurely bust your screen. All right, so what I do to kind of alleviate that is before I smooth the whole thing down, I just get my finger in that channel. Make sure you got some tape in that channel. So if it does get in there, it's not getting too deep. You know what I mean? But that's pretty much it. Like this screen is ready to go. All it needs is a, you know, we give it like a quick degrease just to get all my greasy fingers. You don't know who's handling these panels in the factory. I touched it all over when I was putting it together and stuff like that. But other than that, she's ready to go. And if it pops, you can just take this mesh out, pop a new one in, and we're good to go. I don't need to buy a static frame, just the panel. Don't need to wait for some guy to stretch it. Just do it now and we saw what, like a couple minutes here. So there it is right it's ready to go okay so that's it i'm going to work my way through the rest of the stack of frames get them coated and we're going to put them straight into production now i thought about making a video you know of the first print showing how good it is and stuff like that but we all understand that white ink is going to print better when you increase the tension by like 40 percent and it's kind of hard to show on camera anyway so what I want y'all to think about is not what a white print looks like on the camera, but think about those inventory savings. Think about that upfront cost and really do the math on it. And the biggest thing is it'll help us reduce our screen inventory. And if it's helping us reduce our inventory while also increasing our quality, that is a no brainer. That is a huge win. So while the rollers, you know, rollers do have more control, but it comes with maintenance and it comes with a little more training required, a little more nuance and finesse in my opinion. 
where these kind of hit the sweet spot in the middle. So I'm really stoked on these. I love the idea of being able to stretch frames ourselves easily. They are at a great cost. The upfront cost is not scary. It's not like an investment for us. If anything, it's like I said, it's cheaper and then it only gets cheaper as it goes on. So this is huge for us, right? Inventory savings, quality goes up, cost goes down. It's just a win-win. So I'm pumped to get these into production. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I just gotta say, you know, I'm gonna be in the comments. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna be on Instagram, the DMs. Let me know if you have any questions, any feedback. I wanna hear it. So thank you all for tuning in again. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.